Hey guys, it's Dawn here. Welcome back to the show. Um, as I said before in a previous episode, we are kicking off season three of the podcast and we are reigniting Bridal Business School with some amazing guest speakers. Um, today I have got with me the amazing Gretchen Mauer and I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly because I always worry about not pronouncing your surname correctly, but we're going to be amazing Gretchen Nobody Mauer. does. <laughs> Gretchen is a former salon owner with 30 plus years experience in our industry she was a platform artist a published freelance bridal stylist and a contributing editor to a number of national magazines she's also the author of two books um the B business of bridal beauty written uh, for the salon industry and published by by my my lady and the my second the americans know that that's yeah, and the second, they publish all the textbooks. <laughs> yes. Oh, they do. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Um, and the second one was for brides entitled Wedding Morning Success. So your guide to avoiding the chaos and drama of most brides experience. Gretchen created an award-winning website back in 1998 called WeddingHair.com, selling her step-by-step -step hair kits to brides and to stylists around the world. Um, up until 2008 and currently she's an indie educator and runs the largest Facebook group for updo hairstylists and that's getting up to around 20,000 members now I'm going to talk and to Gretchen all about how she did that and and what was involved she's also the creator of the updo system champion course as well as some other courses that she does um, that you can find at updosystem.com Gretchen I am so thrilled to have you back on the show thank you so much for being here well, I love you. I love you. I, I, you know, when I saw the business of bridal beauty school, I'm like, well, it's the same title as my book. I got to figure out who this girl is and support her, you know? Oh, thank you. And I love having you on here because you and I think very similarly about having a business that needs to be complemented online as well as offline. Um, and whether yes. that means growing the business online or whether it just means using the tools, the online tools to build your business, you and I think very uh, very similarly about that and um, I I want to talk about a couple of things with you I want to talk about first of all, I want to talk about your updo system because I love that I think it's something that hairdressers and makeup artists alike need to learn about um, and we're going to talk about uh, Gretchen has this unique system how she teaches to uh, other hairstylists and some makeup artists that want to learn hair she's got this unique system that helps people uh, or helps um stylists and makeup artists be able to take any style and actually recreate it for their special occasion clients so I'm going to be talking with Gretchen about that but I also want to talk about her Facebook group because I think um, you guys will be excited to hear about how she has grown the uh, updo what's it called uh, the title of it the updo and hairstyle education page and updo. then group yeah up to hairstyle education group that's it and she's grown that from nothing to almost 20,000 <laughs> members so we're going to talk about that because I think it's quite an exciting topic but let's first of all start about up to system Gretchen you've been in this industry for such a long time now what made you decide to create the up system.com how did that come about well the um the updo system is actually a system I've been teaching all through my career because when people signed up for my updo class and I learned intuitively how to throw up an updo and being behind the chair. And I think this is what's important is there's a lot of great updo people out there, you know, absolutely stunning artists who do a lot of editorial and who do a lot of steps and but I was behind the chair like the regular stylist and I would get proms and I would get brides and wedding parties and so I had to learn how to work faster I had to learn how to work with all that anxiety in the room it's one thing mm. when you hire a model and you have the perfect lighting and you have hours to do a style and to learn it and present it and blah, 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 but behind the chair stuff. So that, that is what was the catalyst. And then I took a coaching career and my husband went into mental health. So we went into counseling. So I was reading all these books on people reading and, and communication. And um, I've always been intuitive and, and understanding like we're a person 
you know, when someone says, oh yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, I like it. And they're going like this and you know darn well, they don't like it and they're doing things to their, and a lot of styles will ignore those clues because they don't quite know that if someone's trying to be nice, you, you have to go in and say, listen, um, I, I think you like it, but I'm getting the sense that there's something off and you're kind of, you know, pulling it tighter here. What, so this is all in my system. It's mm -hmm. communication. So there's three C's, there's consultation and it's backed up by brain science. So literally just the act of smiling and it can be hard when you're exhausted and you walk into the front to get your client you know, to, to be on, and we are exhausted. We work so hard all day, every day, but to be on, to be on, even if you just have to put that smile on and, and take some deep breaths to just like get that juices going, it pays dividends on the other end of it because you're, you're smiling, you're being in the moment, you're paying attention. Um, and these things are all part of the system. So there is a specific set of questions that are in the, the Up to System Champion course that go with the consultation. Um, people who've taken it, they're like so surprised that it works. I think the same with you when you have your scripts for the phone and yeah. how to get the brides, you know, from Ghost Team and all that. These scripts work. And, and I know we're going to talk about the Up to group later. A, a coach taught me how to grow the group with these systems work. I know yeah. they're so new and we think if you just keep doing more of the same thing, expecting different results, then, then you're just spinning your wheels and you're going to burn out. So the it's system definition has, of madness, isn't it? I think it it's is the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And it's very common because honest to goodness, and I know this is weird, but my husband and I, um, it was like, so unheard of that all right we're gonna pay six thousand dollars this is probably about five four four years ago we paid six thousand dollars for a guy to coach us for six months and you're like oh my gosh never blah 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 and we would like you just don't even know what you don't know yeah and when you have someone just asking questions and drawing things out of you and you getting clear and you're 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 realizing your partner does it this way and then you do it this way and you say things this way and then he says things this way and, and so we were a married couple trying to create this counseling practice together and it so coaches and then i hired a coach for when i was a clarity coach and i was doing updos and i was doing brat like how do i marry all this together and she helped me marry it all together and that's how the group was birthed mm -hmm. so consultation with is an important part and it, and and if you ask a client do i do a good con most hairdressers think they do a good consultation that's the hardest thing to get them to understand that they're really missing things yeah and it and it's and it's nothing that they're just unaware so they're not doing anything wrong they're not doing anything bad they are just unaware of some of the specifics especially when it comes to the special event client she is not your you know, your regular person. She's been planning this wedding and spending so much money for years, especially with COVID. They've pushed their weddings off two or three years even. Yeah. So they're coming with like so much anxiety. So I talk about that. I talk about how to calm them. And so then the construction, which is the second part of the system is designed so that the minute you have your guest, you're speaking, you're asking questions, she's talking so if you're talking and she's talking right there that calms anxiety it's just a natural thing you go to a counselor office just talking calms anxiety and then now as you have a specific construction system to get into right away so you don't just curl an entire head of hair and think how the heck am I going to do this photo when I'm done with these curls yeah so you're curling and curling and curling and you're like I don't know how to break this down. So you're, you're raising yourself up, but the and that's causing the stylist anxiety yes. then, and that can then and be then the client. The anxiety comes off of your body. Mm. We know this, this is, this is 
This is how they read people. This is how the lawyers do it. This is how, you know, so your anxiety is coming off. She can possibly read it and then she'll feel your doubts and then she won't respond appropriately. So if you behave in a way where there is steps to follow, you go from one thing to the next, you have confidence in your tone, you, you know where you're headed because you've had the training of the system, um, then she is like, oh, I've never had a hairdresser that like did this or did this or mm -hmm. asked me this question or wrote these things down or categorized this or did that. And, and so now her confidence is growing and yeah. now she's feeling good energy back to you and your confidence is growing. And yeah. the third C is creativity. Okay, hang on. All hang on. That... I want to stop you there, actually, because yes. let me go back to the first C just for a second. With the first C, you said was consultation. And I think what you were saying there really was that the consultation is not always just about what you say. It's also about how she's behaving in the chair. And and it's not. And again, it's listening to what she's talking about, I think, as well. And it's not just the hair. So yeah, that's what I mean. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not just about the style. You're at, you know, right. she could have had a really bad day. She's sat in a chair and she's like, oh God. And then blah, 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 and everything's come out. And you're just like, whoa. But it but the con but the consultation, like you're saying then, is okay. Now I've got to get her into a state of being ready for me to do the look that she ultimately wants. And we know as well as hairdressers, e even as and this goes with makeup artists as well we know that sometimes what they give you is perhaps not going to marry up with how they're going to look they might give you this picture give you this photo that they want but how it looks on them is uh, you know can be totally different to how it looks on yeah. the image so that and first c yes that's a massive step it's a massive step because the photo is a manifestation of their hopes and dreams. Yes. A hairdresser looks at the photo and sees curls yes. or her hair is not going to do this or her hair is too long or her hair is not thick enough. The hairdresser is like all caught up in hair and up here. And what you have to first do is realize that the photo is her hopes and dreams and you have to affirm her hopes and dreams in a specific way. And then yeah. you've got to get, tell me what drew you to this picture. And I don't want to give away my whole system because yeah. I tend to over deliver, yeah. but yeah. you know, so there's ways to get, cause I've had brides say, oh yeah, I don't know. Maybe, well, I couldn't find another photo I liked and this is my go-to style and yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. So oh, they find the picture of the back of the hair. And then you say to them, well, how do you want the front to look? Do you want a sweep? You know, do you want it all back? Do you want some kind of height? And, and they've gone, oh, um, I'm not really sure. Do you want a middle part? Do you want a side part? So yeah, so the consults, I think that first C, you know, really everything starts from there. Yeah. It does. It does. And yeah. there's a lot of great questions to ask that are in the system about, you know, that will get help, will help the, the bride have clarity. People know what they like and what they don't like. They always don't know why. Yeah. They don't know why. And so when they're asked to describe things, then they, they almost are listening to their own words and they're like, huh, I don't know why I just feel this way. Like, so especially, especially with a special event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and we know, like I did a lot of second time weddings. So there were older brides. There was teenagers in the wedding where there was mixed, you know, mixed siblings happening mm. and they weren't always happy to be there. And, you know. Yeah. The whole, the, the step parent dynamics can sometimes yeah. throw a wedding. Definitely. Yeah. I've had similar situations where it's been families merging together and um, it's another thing then with the C it, it is actually reading the situation as well. It's not, yes. you know, and yep. I know that you and I have done some, um, we've done a few webinars together. One of the ones that we did was, was actually about that. We actually talked about, 
um, you know, what happens when you do have these awkward situations. And we were sort of, we did a bit of a, I think we did like a bit of a troubleshooting thing where we talked yeah. about scenarios and situations and then how you can sort of overcome those situations, you know, yeah. and, and the, the confidence in your ability to be able to meet the needs of, of those clients. Okay, so so the first bit was the consultation second bit we were talking about was construction now construction is where they start to get practical this is where in the mind of the stylist they're thinking okay i'm getting a picture now of what she wants because i've been talking to her about her look and her style and her wedding and stuff and and one of the things i teach in my scripts which is so before they've even got them booked but one of the things i i teach in my scripts which um, which for anyone that's joining us for the becomeabridemagnet.com, if you're coming to the four day live event in May, this is what you're going to get access to. But I teach in my, uh, with my scripts is to actually get the bride to talk about their wedding while they're on the phone. Um, and actually, because you want to build up a rapport and then hopefully when she does get to the consultation part where you're actually physically doing a trial, for example, you know, you've already preempted that bride. You already kind of already know what's going on. I give lots of uh, tips to uh, stylists about the things that they can do before the bride even gets to the chair. Um, so that you know that when they do get to the chair, yes, okay, there might be things going on and, and weddings are stressful. You know, they are, they've got a lot going on in their mind. But if you're then using Greg, something like Gretchen system to be able to break down the style and what they looked at and why they chose those styles. If you do some of the pre stuff that I talk about with my scripts, it all marries together to have a really happy client and to have a really positive experience for you and the bride. And that means that when she is kind of unloading in that in that part where she's just sat in your chair and she's unloading her day and you're walking it through everything. When you get to the construction side of things, you're able to go, okay, we, we already know now this is going to somewhat work, but she knows now it's not going to look identical because you've had that discussion with her. Um, and then it's a case of, well, let's try it this way. I'll, and break it down. So talk a little bit more about construction. I know that this is something that you are going to be doing a class on um, coming up in May. So on my program, guys, Gretchen is actually going to do a class. And this is exactly what she's going to be doing the class on, which is construction. She's going to do a practical demonstration about how to break down the updo. So I'm thrilled that you're going to be doing that with us. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. But talk a little bit more then about the construction and, and sort of the, the sort of theory behind it and, and, and how how it sort of comes about. Okay. So this, this construction has basically the most important areas, similar when you break down a haircut. So mm -hmm. when I wanted to do two or three prom kids at the same time, and I know that sounds like, what are you talking about? But I would do the consultation. I would break up my construction I would ponytail here, here, and here, and someone else could do the curls. Mm. And so then she would sit and her curls would set and cool and she could be on her phone, you know, <laughs> and then I go right to the next girl. Boom, boom, boom. Construction, set. She sits, you know, it depends, you know, how you want to And how many it. people you've got. Yeah. The yeah, nice, yeah. And then, and then, um, so I would, I would book on the hour and then on the 15 and then on the half hour and then all three would be done by the quarter of. So it's 45 minutes, you know, and uh, you know, it takes a while to get there, but it's possible with the system. So hmm. when it comes to a bride, we're also talking about what you just reiterated is that there's this connection, there's empathy, there's an experience, there's being in her corner it's calming her down, especially if you're doing a wedding at somebody's house. Mm. You know, one bride was crying because her brother came down to the kitchen and started frying bacon and I was there doing her hair and I don't want my hair to smell like bacon and she's all upset and, you know, it's crazy. I have a zillion stories and all those stories are in the um, Wedding Morning Success book. Yeah. 
dogs, cats, all kinds of things, you know. I've had a few of those too. Where you, oh, I, I've gosh. even I've even turned up to a few weddings and I've had to text my husband the address going, I'm in the middle of nowhere. So just so that you know where I am, if I don't come home in five hours, it's because I'm at this address. Because, yeah. you know, yeah, you've kind of turned up and not expecting what, you know. Yeah. Lots yeah. of stories, lots of stories. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I, my mind is racing with all the <laughs> scenarios of all the funky locations we did weddings at. Um, but so the construction, um, and I think what I teach in my lives, in my, in my group, I say, okay, guys, let's do this together. I don't Oops. practice the style ahead of time. I have a general idea. And if I change my thoughts midway, you are hearing me think out loud. And that's how you have to be at the wedding because every head is different and every person's different. Every head is different. And, right. And so yeah. we don't have to prove to the bride, I'm the best hairdresser because I'm going to blow through this the easy, like I know what I'm doing. No, you, you can say, all right, I'm going to try this with this padding, or I'm going to try this with this curling iron. And you know, your hair is this and your hair is that, and you put in your products and you do. So you, so the construction is is the step-by-step -step in the construction of the head and it's broken mm -hmm. down into sections. But at the same time, you're you kind of wanna be playful and curious and um, work with her. And then I have this very important part called getting buy-in partway through. If you're working in silence and the client's on her phone and then all of a sudden she looks up from her phone and she does this, and then she goes back to her phone. The hairdresser now, within milliseconds, is reading that little interaction in her own brain with her own filter. And she doesn't have clarity of what the client actually just did or looked at. But we're going to start to get that brain freeze and that fear. So mm. partway through, I have this thing called buy-in. So when you get a section that's done really lovely and I'll show this when I do the class and you get excited about it and you say hey Mary I want to show you how wonderful the curls are coming out over here and I just kind of want to get your buy-in on like should your tendrils hang or do you want them tucked in because we could do either or you know and it could be the weather right the weather could change on the way of day of her wedding and maybe when the trial was it was dry and then on the wedding day it's rainy so there's humidity yeah. so you might not want your tendrils down you might want to tuck them in yeah. these things happen or it's so you're windy getting buy -in. yeah 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 definitely and yeah oh i tell you you're <laughs> i'm sorry i get excited i'm interrupting you <laughs> um so you want to go as far i i've seen it i've seen it when a when a stylist hands the bride the mirror and the person's like how, how, how do I do this? And they're and they're trying to do this and this, yeah. and they're doing weird things. And the hairdresser no has to realize you're not just like a servant that day. You were hired professional. Mm. So you touch her and you say, I'm going to stand you up. Would you please stand? And you move her shoulders and you put her in the mirror and then you hold the mirror or you give her the mirror. And so she looks exactly where you want her to look so she's immediately like wow oh wow yes. look at that that's amazing yes, yes. and this Love is it. all the head stuff this is all the head stuff you're not going to hear literally really anywhere else in, in the in up to training well it's not something that you get taught at school no and i learned it i learned it because um I really think it goes back to hairdressing school and some of the stories that um, when I was a student, a young mom and her daughter came in one day and the daughter was already in her prom dress and already had an updo and I was confused. And this is 1980. And I could tell that the girl's hair looked like something from the 70s. So it was all bouffant and like what's in style right now is some of the 70s looks. And and the, and the hairdressing teacher's like, oh my gosh, what'd they do to you? She started ripping her hair out and redoing it. And the girl left with a smile. And I was like, oh, I could literally ruin someone's prom day if I yeah. don't do her hair right. I could ruin someone's wedding if I don't do her hair right. So I'm huge on that communication piece. And if I sense someone's not liking it, I'm going to go in and ask. And I'm going to get them 
I never want anyone to ever leave and go home and wash their hair out. There, there's no excuse for that. If you're willing to communicate and really, you know, I see this stuff online and, and some people are like, oh, nobody's ever happy. Just get through it. Just get through the season. Well, that's fine. You know, then you're not someone who needs to take the updo system champion course. But if you really want to master this craft yeah. and make money at it, I want to do a week's pay in one day. Yeah. So I want to master all the different aspects. And so you're getting my 30 plus years of career in, you know, in a course and me, I'm willing to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so the construction system also has communication in it. It also has reading this client and, you know, and those two things, the consultation and the construction, free up all the anxiety between you and the guest. So now your brain is so free now to be creative. Yeah. Your brain is free to be creative. So when you get to a section and it's in, it's pinned, it's this, it's nice. You're like, you know what? We can maybe do this or that over here. Tell me about your dress again. Well, my dress has this crisscross in the back. And I'm like, wow, you know what? Back in section five, I could just, instead of just bringing the back up, I can bring up one piece this way and one piece this way and we'll crisscross it and it'll mirror your dress. And it'll be, oh, that'd be cool. That's just all part of the system. Yeah. Okay. And it's, yeah. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no, I, I yeah, I, I, I think that's amazing. And, and like you said, the construction side of things, it's, it's, I mean, a lot of it's going on in the head of the stylist as well. Mm -hmm. So, and, but also the other thing I wanted to get across to anyone listening is that you don't have to be a hairdresser to learn to do updos. No. And I think that uh, something that I was talking about with Danielle Murray from Hello SEO, she being a former uh, um, makeup artist herself and, and hairdresser, she was saying how she upskilled she was a hairdresser and upskilled to makeup i was the other way around i was a makeup artist and upskilled to hair and did uh, an updo styling and i think one of the important things about that is is that everything that you're teaching in the updo system like anyone could pick that up and learn because yes. it's part psychology yes because mm -hmm. we are trying to understand and read people and you know it is I think it takes a lot to be a bridal stylist. I don't think every hairdresser, makeup artist has it in them. Some of them don't like to do it. It's too stressful for them. So it, it takes a certain person to be a hair and makeup artist that does um, bridal, I believe. Anyway, I think that there are plenty. I know I've been in many salons where I've had a beauty I've had the beauty room in the salon and they said to me, oh, I don't want to do updos. Can you do the updos? And I've gone, oh yeah, sure, I'll do the updos because they didn't want to do it. It just wasn't something that they enjoyed doing. Um, but so, okay, so that's two Cs. So what's the third C? Is the creativity. It's creativity, yeah. yeah. So it's actually so that, having the forethought to then go, I can change this and yeah. make it match my bride's dress, personality. Exactly. Whatever Hair picture the she has in her head. Yeah, the weather, yeah, yeah. okay the new hair ornament that she brings in. And I think that was the most fun I had in creativity with the brides was like, well, tell me about your headpiece mm. and where is it going to sit? And so someone in a group today asked about in a boho look, where should I put a veil? And so I was teaching them how to put a little, hide a little ponytail at this yeah. right in the crown. Yeah. So you can find it under the braid and stick the comb in and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, show someone where and how to take it out, which is important. Yeah, that's something I used to do. Yeah. Teach mom yeah. or bridesmaid. Look, you know, yeah. if she wants to take it out. This is how you do it. Hold it still. Lift it up. Never yes. pull. Don't just go like this. <laughs> Don't pull it out. Don't put it out. You're going to ruin the hour of my work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that that creativity, you know, um, if if someone had a, a headpiece that was borrowed, you know, something borrowed, something blue. It's is that a is that an Australian, London? Yeah, everything. Too? Yeah, okay. definitely. That's yeah, universal. So anyway, she was borrowing this headpiece and the bride didn't care. She had already been married and the, the bride I was doing was borrowing it. And, and I said, well, let's 
can I take the silk flowers off this ring? Because that's not going to work with the style you want. And she's like, yeah, sure, go for it. And so then I just popped the silk flowers off and took them home and hot glued them on the hairpins. And then, so I was able to give her something no one else is brave enough to try. I think that's where if you want to be creative and you want to win them, you've got to be a bit bold and brave. And so the other parts of the system allow you to be a bit bolder and braver because it's helped reduce your anxiety and helped create connection. And with yours, with the script and talking to them on the phone, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's not just in and out from the neck up. It's Gretchen took care of my day. Gretchen and her staff literally put away all the food because my mom was late to get to the church. So we said, they said, mom, go to the church. We'll take care of it. We'll lock up. We'll clean up. We'll bag all the, 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 the goodies and, and get to the, get to your daughter's wedding. Those are the things that they write about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I had a lovely review from a mom once saying thank you for taking care of my daughter and how it I mean I had a lovely review from the bride as well but I actually had one from the mum and I thought that was really lovely um and she was like thank you so much for just taking the time to take care of my daughter on her wedding day um and again having having your I mean this all goes back to target market it all goes back to having that ideal client sitting in your chair and then that starts off with how you are branding and that's all the things that I talk about in the course in the program that we're doing I'm going to be helping clients being able to 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 get the right clients in the first place. There's nothing worse than like you were saying before, some people saying that they just wanna get through the season. Well, to me, that's telling me that you're not targeting the right kind of brides because I loved weddings. Like I lived and breathed weddings. I loved my brides. I loved the hair that I was doing. I loved the makeup that I was doing. And I think that if, if you are just kind of getting through it, it means that perhaps you're not targeting the right brides. And then again, and it, it will all come down to the systems and procedures that you're using to attract them in the first place, which is then your social media, you know, that your website, SEO. And then it's again, you know, getting on the phone with these clients and, and talking them through, which is where I, where my scripts come in. And that's where I know that um, with the testimonials I've had, particularly even recently, even during COVID, I've got some of my clients, they're still doing, they've been able to be fortunate enough to be in a position where they could still service brides and they're booking in, they originally I had this the four day live event that's coming up uh, was a 12 week kind of group coaching program and I've made it into this four day live event um, because I thought I just want to you know get people to get results quickest particularly with COVID we want to get back on our feet as quickly as possible so that's why I've turned it into a, a four day live event or, or virtual event you can watch it from the from your couch um, wherever you are around the world but um, being able to have these scripts and have these systems, these step-by-step -step systems in place has meant that the clients know now that once they're in their chair, they're already pretty much over the line. Now, how you treat them in person is what's going to get you the reviews. It's what you're going to get the referrals. And that's the key. Yes, you can get them. You can target some great clients. You want to make sure that your branding is on point, that you're, you, you know, you're using social media for everything that it's worth. You know, your SEO is down and everything. That's the first part of it because then you're attracting the right bride, but then being able to get them to sit in your chair and go through, you know, up to system, for example, is showing them that everything that you that they've known about you so far is the truth you know all the reviews they've read on google is the like is the absolute like she does this this is exactly this is exactly how she made me feel and that whole then system um of the consultation building the updo so the construct construction of the of the updo and then having that uh, confidence to be able to be more creative in the style and match the bride and the bride's personality and even the bridesmaid's personalities or the or the, the whole theme of the wedding like that's what is going to get you more and more clients the whole step-by-step -step system of, of doing everything to target the right client getting them in the chair and then wowing them and it sounds like a lot 
But once you have the awareness and you've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. It's, it's not like you got to get out your paperwork again and you got to get out your scripts again. You, you've kind of got them down now yeah. and you're just going to, and you're just, your confidence just continues to grow and grow and grow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like I said, that's what I think that's where my clients are seeing the most results because once they can get the bride and they they sort of talk through on the phone exactly what the bride's looking for, the bride automatically knows this person is exactly the person I need to be with. I I know 100% I'm going to book with them. So, um, and then it's just the case of you then being able to have the confidence yourself as the stylist or as the makeup artist that you know that when they sit in your chair they are going to get the best service from you Mm -hmm. it yeah it all you know like you said and then it will come become second nature you'll you'll start to do things yeah okay the first few times you might kind of have a a little script in front of you maybe you maybe you build yourself a little template that you just tick off you know so there's nothing wrong yeah i i i i tell my my students and 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 all these years and in the course clients like to see that you have something that you're taking notes on and that you are paying attention writing down and then the day of the wedding you bring those notes back out and you lay it out in front of them and they're like oh she's going to remember and they relax yeah yeah so it's It's so funny you saying that because I was going through because having moved house I was actually going through uh, one of my baskets with with all my accreditations it had all of my uh, beauty accreditations and everything all my certificates and that and I also had in there some clear plastic folders where I had I wish I could see them they had and they had exactly what you're saying though I had my uh, face you know the um the image of a face yeah. that makeup artists would have and and in yeah. the back of the head so that I could draw the updo mm-hmm. and then it had eyes and I'd created my own things I had eyes you know face or I'd say um you know describe the hair so, you know I call it a fringe you'd call it bangs but you know side <laughs> bangs front bangs you know all back and it was it was exactly what you're saying I and and I think I think that there's a lot of stylists out there who don't do that anymore. And I think that they think, oh, I've just got it all in my head. Um, And to me, I'm like, if you've got it written down, um, another one of our guest um, educators is Sue Louise. Sue uh, Mm. is the owner of the Bridal Beauty Pro app. Her app does this. You can record the details of your client in her app. So if you want to be digital, great, then use something like Sue's app. If you're still a bit old school like me, then you might want to have it written down. Um, And like you said, bring the notes with you. But I think that when you're seen to be listening and you're seen to be writing things down, I actually had a section which just had notes. And seriously, it was about what is the name of her husband? Do you know how many people, <laughs> how many hair and makeup artists would not have a clue what the name of the fiance is? You know, ask about their dog. That's their fur baby. They may not have kids right now. What's their fur baby? What do they like to eat? You know, what happened last time around? Oh my God, we had to take the dog to the vet. When you see them next, you've got this little note in your note saying, oh, I had to take the dog to the vet last time because it was unwell how's the doc it's about building relationships you know being uh, having those people in your chair and it's the same when you've got your salon guests as well having the people in your chair lying down on your beauty bed it's about making connections and actually being the person where they go oh oh thanks for asking oh yeah no he's doing really well thank you um so having having something written down and having those notes and then being able to read back on some of those things I think is really important I I have to say I've been going to a chiropractor and I think he does this because he's he always knows he'll go how are the kids you know you were saying last time that this was happening or what's happening with that you know they've just changed schools haven't they I reckon he does that I think he makes a few notes about what he talks about each week so that when you come back you know you feel comfortable with that person in the room yeah yeah it's it's why people go to the same 
bar or the same restaurant because the waitress knows them or this, knows you know, I name. know. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, they, they know you by name and, and it's that small town. And I think the small town's going to come back because I see all the time that people are, you know, buying properties where, cause they work from home or they can work remotely and it's changing. Yeah. The whole world is changing and you need to be aware of it and go with it, you know? And I, it was one girl said, Oh, I work in a small town salon and so i gave her some tips i said well why don't you show your small town people that you know what's the latest fashion is you know what the latest hairstyle is like don't just say it's a small town and that there's always a chic salon in a small town i'm sorry there's always a chic something you know so level up mm, um mm. yeah not, nothing wrong with it no definitely not well that pleases me Oh yeah, yeah. I give that, tips, so that's not yeah. an excuse in small town. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, that brings me then on to let's talk about uh, Facebook groups because that's another thing that I think we could definitely help um, other hair and beauty professionals, other hair and makeup artists, be able to kind of think about Facebook groups. Now, Gretchen has grown the largest updo Facebook group. Uh, ever, I think, on Facebook. As we said before in her intro, it's like up to about 20,000 uh, members inside of that group. Let me just start by saying to those of you out there, if any of you know anything about Facebook, groups are one of the biggest kind of key players in growing your Facebook presence right now. Facebook are uh, prioritizing as at uh, 2021, <laughs> Facebook are prioritizing what people see within groups. And again, this is all about keeping you on their platform. And the more active your groups are, the better. And um, one of the things that uh, Gretchen's group is, is extremely, extremely active. And I think it's one of the things I'm going to be building up a bit more with my business group. I want to try and get more active in that group. And in fact, I'm probably going to be more active inside of the group than I am so much on my business page. Originally, I built my business using my business page because that's how it was done. And I kind of was told, don't use your personal profile for business because Facebook don't like that. Back in early 2000s, or, or I should say maybe late sort of 2000 and sort of 10 2011 Facebook had a massive crackdown on uh, people using their personal pages for business and they actually shut down a lot of accounts shut down a lot of Facebook accounts which included then shutting down access to their business account to the business pages or fan pages as they're called uh, or were called I grew my business with a couple of thousand members using a, a couple of thousand like likes and follows and stuff um, doing live streaming, particularly on my business page. And then I would share that into my group. At the time, that was probably the best way to do that. And it grew quite quickly. But now I think, particularly in the last couple of years, the focus has been more on Facebook groups. Um, even Facebook came out talking about Facebook groups and how they were going to be prioritizing them in the newsfeed. So you would see more from Facebook groups. They like the idea of community and obviously a group is a community so Gretchen a, a, how long ago did you start your group is it about two years ago yeah it's about two years it was like the winter like October of 2018 mm. and um yeah you know, and then was, yeah somewhere yeah and actually you can look it up it's on the group there. yeah I should have a look at that but I think it's I, I think it's about two I reckon it's been going a good two years now a little over two but years, yeah obviously mm -hmm. you started with zero members in the group as everyone does we start from nothing tell me about how you grew the group originally what were you given as advice I know that you had a, a coach and it was um your coach that basically said to you I think it'd be a good idea for you to start an up uh, start a group a Facebook group he didn't tell you what to do did he that was kind of your thoughts of as to what you would do um, well i think i started with the page yeah something with your business yeah, page I, yeah and then i thought i want to do a group and i really literally honestly did not give it a whole lot of thought mm. and and i just created it and i'm like and so then i kind of had to learn learn as it went and then um beauty bosses jordan key on beauty bosses or something like that he helps a lot of stylists grow their 
color business and they're, mm. you know, and he's helped wedding people too. Um, so I saw him and I'm like, this kid's on fire and uh, I better grab him while, and, it, and the, what I kind of found interesting was he and his, and his partner, his girlfriend, they're not even hairdressers, but they understand marketing. Mm. They understand social media. Yeah. They understand the human condition. They she's a, she's a, I think she was a beauty pro, wasn't she? She did she, beauty. She, she did something like. She wanted to be a hairdresser, but she never tanning? did it. I don't know so, if she did tanning or something, did she? Yeah, she, she, um, she wanted to be somehow get into the industry without having to become a hairdresser. Yeah. And yeah. so this was kind of how it worked. And um, so he, he, you know, I paid him and we met uh, weekly. And so he sent me through a particular program on get on, uh, change, change your wording to this and change when you invite people into the group, say this. And, and he would give me these specific things to, um, you know, you want to build again, you want to build that rapport, you want to you Facebook wants you to invite new members, but they only give you one sentence. Mm. So erase that sentence and create your own little script and put it in there. And, and then how I literally had, and this is just the beginning. This isn't forever. Once the group grows, it grows. Facebook yeah, grows. that's right. That's right. So in the beginning, I would spend 15 minutes a day on other groups and I joined other groups and I wouldn't go on there to troll and steal people, but I went on there to help and answer questions and to show up and, and to, you know, be a part of it. Um, and, and so it's all about the algorithms. It's all about being online. Now that I'm promoting my bridal business, I'm joining all these wedding groups and wedding blogs and weddings. So I spent some time on the wedding stuff and I spent some time on the hairdressing stuff and but if you want to grow your own little group if you want to grow your group for your for your business or for your clients you want to be there for them like remember their birthday like I used in the beginning I did style of the week so I would find a style that someone in the group did and I made a little template in Canva and let's support so and so she won style of the week and then I ran a contest and gave away free copies of my book. And then, you know, and so I really almost don't have to do that stuff anymore. I just have to show up and yeah. like and comment and yeah, and, and, because and it's just, taken on its when you get kind of past that thousand members, it kind of yeah. takes on its own form and, and especially a thousand active members. If you've got people actually posting stuff in the group, um, it it then like you said it sort of rewards itself and I know one of the things that you did for a long time was you showed up live on video every day yeah. for probably the best part of six months to a year you were constantly in that group uh sharing everything that you knew about updos mm -hmm. and that's another thing too and I've learned it from other coaches like John Maxwell and some of Zig Ziglar like some of these other people people they're people people they're not just coaches but they understand the human condition yeah. and it's like when you help others to become the best they can be it's going to help you mm. so you know some people would say oh you teach too much you give away too much you know i don't i don't believe that mentality so if if i if i give away all this information well i know you need to hear it at least 10 times before it's going to click yes so you saw it five times in the live, then in the sixth or seventh time, you're like, you know what? I really need to buy her course. And, and as a course creator, you have to also know that that is what it takes. Yes. And people come into a group and, and the percentages online are much greater than the percentages of like in-person sales or running an ad. Um, to attract 5,000, you have to have 20,000 in your group, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, you can see that a post has been seen by 2.3 thousand people. Well, there's 19,000 in the group that 19,000 people aren't going to see it. No. And, um, but when you can boost your post or you, and there's nothing you can't learn. I was actually, a, 
I think I signed up. But anyways, I spent an hour with Facebook marketing people. Mm. Facebook paid me. You know, they paid me a little hundred dollar gift card um, to sit with one of their marketing people to do exactly what you were talking about. And that's the new groups and the new um, the new um, rooms. We talked about rooms. rooms. You, yeah. you as a group owner, what would you want a room to do? And how would you want a room to work? I said, well, I would have to, you know, control it. I wouldn't want anyone just to come on and make a room and this and that. So Facebook is learning and we're learning and Facebook changes and we change. And it's because it's really, people don't get it, but it's, it's, it's a baby. It's still a baby in the realm of the internet. You know, the website started like when Apple start, like nobody really knew what they were doing. Zuckerberg no. didn't really know what he was doing. So these things take on a life of their own. And so your Facebook group is going to take on a life of its own. Your course is going to take on a life of its own. Your page is. And so you are constantly shifting and moving and mm. being open. And, and so you're interacting and, and then you're like, do I really like this? Am I going to go all in, you know? Um, and as a clarity coach, I help people kind of figure that out. Yeah. So do like, I learned makeup, but I hate makeup <laughs> because I'm a little wound up. Right. So I'm running the day, running the show, running the team. And if I have to stop to do makeup, it's like yeah. kills me. So yeah. I like gave up makeup, like no makeup. I got to find a makeup artist to bring with me. Yes. So knowing, so your group will, will grow and it'll shift and it'll change and and you will grow and shift and change and you might find that you're so creative like with contests so you might find that you love to do how-to videos and show your clients like you know how to like it took me forever like how do I do those beach waves like I didn't know you know but if you could teach your clients that on the on your Facebook group for your people you could go so one day like there's a sale at the prom store, right? David's Bridal is having clearance on their gowns. Take your phone and walk through David's Bridal yes. and say, kids, the, the, this is here, this is here. Look at this. If you have brown hair, this color would be gorgeous on you. If you are this body type, this cut will be gorgeous on you. So, you know, do you have a passion for fashion? Do you have a passion for, for life and people? Yeah. And I have my hashtag is do life with your clients. So- you can really all of a sudden discover you're going to have more fun with your Facebook group and your people. And and I love what you said there because that was one of the things I I think I think that makeup artists and hairstylists find that building a Facebook group is daunting. And I will agree with that. It is daunting to to think, oh my God, there's this thing, and I don't know too much how I'm going to grow it, and what if no one joins, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not just about, and this is another thing I say about social media just doing good hair and good makeup isn't enough anymore like just because you you can be the best hairstylist or the best makeup artist in the world but if people don't know you how can they book you and if you are not putting yourself out there to um if you are a boho stylist go to the florist you know talk to the wedding dress suppliers how are they you know how are they turning up to their weddings talk to the um celebrants about where they're having their boat their outdoor boho weddings maybe they're having them at the beach maybe they're having them in the fields maybe they're having in the botanical gardens you know it's not just about being a hair and makeup artist and being able to teach hair or teach makeup some people don't like to do that some people are no good at it as well but if you're going to build up a Facebook group, don't feel like, oh my God, if I build this Facebook group, I'm going to be having to teach stuff all the time. Just like Gretchen was saying there, take your phone, relate it to what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Maybe you might take it around your wholesale suppliers. Um, if you're in a salon, um, a beauty salon or even hair salon, you could take it around of your, your wholesale suppliers. Maybe that's something you go to the warehouse. And you're stocking it. Why are you stocking that? Why do you stock so much of it? Maybe it's the most favorite, most popular color with your clients. Um, 
And you talk about, you know, you talk about the color and what you're using. Maybe you've got some accessories. You can talk about how the accessories have been made, how you've teamed up with an accessories person yeah. to create beautiful, um, you know, flat uh, hair jewelry. Um, again, like the florists are, are fantastic colors. And then the makeup artists, you know, the colors of the flowers that match in with the colors of the bridesmaid's dresses. And, and it's all about having a group that doesn't feel like a chore I think that's the key and I think when you look at then collaborating with other local businesses that's another is another exposure um, route as well so you're not just building up this amazing Facebook group where you're sharing all this knowledge with your local clients um, and you're not just teaching them, hey, I'm going to teach you an updo today, or I'm going to teach you how to curl your hair. Like, those are all brilliant things to share with your, you know, your clientele, but go above and beyond that. If you want to be somebody that they're going to come to all the time, they're going to invite friends into the group, even, you know, it doesn't matter if they're not your uh, client, you say to everyone, hey, make sure that you invite three or four friends, because they'll love to hear about, you know, what's going on in our local community, you know? Yeah. Um, and you use it from a local point of view rather than just that hair and makeup point of view. It doesn't have to always be about the hair, about the face, about the makeup. It can be about the local community. It could be a local community group designated to special occasions, for example. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I think you need to find your niche as well. I mean, there were so many times at the beginning for me when I grew uh, the Bridal Business School group or the Bridal Business Community group, um, it was, I knew that I didn't want to teach hair and makeup. I knew that the business side of things, the social media, the digital marketing side of things, that was my passion now. That, that has be became something where I could see that there was a gap, that hairstylists and makeup artists were struggling to be found and struggling to... Um, uh get themselves out there put themselves out there yeah. I, and i knew that doing hair you know teaching hair and teaching makeup wasn't my passion um so i didn't want to create a group that was teaching that stuff it just wasn't for me um and and if you think about it you're a hairdresser i mean you could have taught just general hairdressing but you didn't you niched down and went no updos you know let's teach special occasion bridal work doing the updos and so finding that niche now, but that's also, like you said, now you've got, I know you've got your dolly heads behind you, but also it's helped you then create these different styles. Look at consultations. You're not just going, oh, I'm going to teach you how to do an updo. You're doing everything that is related to that, but also outside of the box, not just that one lane. Right. And sometimes you don't know your lane until you start taking action. Mm. You know, coaches will tell you that, like, just start. And, and the more I wrote my copy, the more I wrote my course, the more I spoke out loud and I watched myself back, I started to really get very much tunnel vision on my, on my, my take on things. Yeah. And so I can't be all things to everybody. You know, I, I want to be approachable. There's a reason why I'm not always like hairdressing looking like all in black and all that, you know, I'm, I, uh, it's I I, I want to be fun and colorful and bright and that's and it matches me so mm. it so you will build your tribe based on your personality and and then you're authentic and so then it isn't hard work now I had a high-end salon in the um, 19 in the in the late 80s there was a lot of money flowing around in the 80s so in the early 90s um, and through the 2000s I had my own uh, shop but it wasn't me. It, it, it just wasn't me. Um, I really wanted to have a kid's salon and I ended up buying a different salon and, um, and it was like, Oh, it's a high end salon. Oh, I can charge more for my haircuts now. And I should have opened a kid's salon <laughs> because I'm, I really like kids and I love teens. And I love prom stuff. But so anyways, you will find your tribe and you will authentically run things the way. So you might start, you know, talking about color but then all of a sudden you're you're a huge resource like I've seen there's some other bridal people and all of a sudden I'll watch their Instagram or whatever and they're showing makeup tutorials and they're showing colors and they're talking 
I'm like, oh, they've shifted over to this like fashion eyebrow thing. That's fine. That's that's what they're doing. But my updo stuff is for the hairdresser in the salon or the freelancer that's working on real people. I'm not who you go to if you want to win Naha. I'm not who you go to if you want to, you know, do editorial. Mm. Like, that's not who I am. Um, so yeah, you get, you definitely got to do what lights you up that that gives yeah, you a passion. Yeah, what lights you up? Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah, you got to do what brings you joy because otherwise, you know, there's no point. And again, like that reflects on on your audience, like you know, because you're not yeah. you don't really want to be there. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's why I love doing interviews like this with <laughs> with other creatives because I think it's more interesting than seeing my face all the time teaching business because it's boring, and I, I just think that everyone in the everyone that I meet through it that has sort of an education business that is either online or offline. And I, I have some stylists who actually teach, you know, actually teach in workshops and classes in person, which is amazing. Um, but I, I just love the diversity that we all bring, but I, I feel like that we all have this common goal, which is to elevate our industry and to be able to show hairdressers and makeup artists and beauty professionals in salons even that there are things that you can do over and above to get yourself out there and to be able to be recognized and to be able to be booked more and therefore earn more money earn more money it's so true i mean back in the day i had to find some kids in the high school i had to go to the shop and and borrow prom dresses and i had to call the local newspaper and then i had to get a friend who was your photographer who would be there and and now you can do all that in your phone you know or you can even all, almost all set it up yourself with your videos because you could create a video and you can pull in a photo and you can pull in a photo and create a video and pull in a photo like there's so much now that you can do if you realize that you have the creative freedom to do whatever you want. And yeah. that's what I think is just amazing is you do, you can take your branding and what you're doing to another level. Like, mm. and then, and then these ideas just come because now it's kind of effortless. Yeah. And I was at the car dealer last week, getting my car fixed, reading my home decorator magazine. And I flipped the channel, flipped the, flipped the channel. I flipped the magazine open and there's this piece of artwork in someone's living room with a woman with rollers in her hair. It was like the main photo. And so I snapped a picture of it with my phone. I'm like, look at this picture in their living room. And I posted it. So like, well, I don't have to think about what I'm going to post. I could post even more. I, I actually calm myself down because Facebook can only circulate so many things. Yeah. You will all of a sudden be in, see the cover of a magazine and say, did you know that so-and-so's favorite new color is this? And the hot color of the prom dresses that will go with this makeup is this. And like all of a sudden you will just see things or yeah. headpieces. You know, I'm always answering questions about headpieces and yeah, or go, take a flower arranging class, like you said, and um, maybe, you know, I love it when you find out from the bride, I, I like to find out it, what's her thing. Are they foodies? Is it all about the music? Is it the location? Is it all about the gown she found in Europe? Like, what is her thing? Mm. And then when you know her thing, the hair becomes a part of her thing. Yep. Yeah, that's what I say in my, in my, very similar to that in my script when they're on the phone, I'm like, talk to the bride about their wedding. Shut up and let them speak because Shut it was, it, the pictures. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, because if one, if there's something that a bride loves to talk about, it's her wedding, you know, <laughs> so let her talk about her wedding because you will get so much insight from just saying, so tell me a little bit about your wedding. It seems like such an obvious question, but there are too many, you know, hair and makeup artists. They're not interested. They just want to get the booking in. They want to get paid. And yet they're the, they're, they're the ones who are either not attracting the right client and therefore it's draining on them, or they're just not charging enough 
and they're getting the the low cost budget um haggling price type of price yeah the price shoppers and don't get me wrong i i will never tell an artist how much they should or shouldn't charge in my opinion what you charge is your business and i want to though empower you to charge what you feel like is your worth and not feel like you have to discount but that all comes down to how you then speak to your brides and how you make them feel and then how you can reflect those reviews that you're getting on google to then how you treat them in the chair but it also starts on when they initially uh, make an inquiry with you talk to them stop texting them back and forward stop just using email get on the phone and say so tell me a little bit about your wedding now i've got a whole load of questions that i give out in my course guys become a bride magnet.com and plug that again because gretchen is going to be uh, doing one of her classes on that but um, one of the things I do is I, I give them a script to what to say on the phone. But one of the questions is, so tell me a little bit about your wedding. You should be writing those things down that they tell you. You need to know these things because all it is doing is building your rapport. And as I was saying before, one of the biggest um one of the biggest things that my clients and my students have seen in the program, I mean, they only got to the first, I had one of them go, I literally have only got to about the fifth or sixth module out of the nine I've got because I'm booking so many people in just because of the scripts. Just yeah. because I now know who I'm targeting, I've got really clear on my target market, which is like my first, uh, which is gonna be pretty much the first day of, of the course, but it's my first kind of three modules. And then the second three modules is about being having some automation involved, having some email marketing um, and really being able to now attract those right brides and get them on the phone and talk to them to make the booking. And it's all like you're saying before, it's all about the system, but it's, it's I 100% believe it's how you speak to them um, to get information from them to them then going, that was a really good conversation. I'm going to book that person because they took the time to talk to me about my wedding. And one of the things one of my clients said was they used to sometimes spend, you know, an hour and an hour and a half on the phone with the bride and then still feel like they didn't make a booking with me. And now he said, um, now it not only has condensed my time talking to them, I'm, I'm booking them. They're pretty much sending me their money within 24, 48 hours and I've got a booking. Um, and it's all because they're following, um, you know, just a few simple questions that have meant they've got to know their bride. And that's what's really important, building that relationship and that rapport. It's it's like some like I don't want to be friends with my bride. I don't want to go to her wedding like that's not the kind of stylist I am. And there are some that want to go to the wedding or they do go to the wedding and I want to do her wedding and be professional and, yeah. and love on her and champion her. That's why I picked that word. I want to mm. champion her, but I, you know, so again, find out because you can only, anyways, when you said the word systems before, which obviously mm. we, I always use that word, but it mm. dawned on me because you asked the question before, how did I start with that? My husband, um, uh, business before counseling with family owned a, um, a, a metal machine shop and they made parts for helicopters and the space shuttle suits and stuff like that. So my husband was quality control and he started when he switched into quality control, he started bringing home all this training and all these books. And I started reading all these procedures and all these books on systems and all these um information on because this system is the track yeah and if you don't have a track to run on you're going to be on the phone with someone trying to be nice mm. and not get the booking mm. and then you're going to get frustrated and then you're going to mm. get the price shopper because you need to have a system and especially with this world now it it, it it's systems run things systems yeah are the, they're, they're, they don't, and then that's harder for the artist to grasp this. Like, I'm not saying you're not gonna be artistic and creative and free. Mm. It yeah. actually makes you more artistic, creative and free because yes. you have some of the parameters based around psychology and language 
people don't know, unless you've had coaching training, you don't know how maybe passive your language is. I had to rewrite a letter today for my husband because he's a counselor and we were trying to write a business letter and he was too emotional in it. And I'm like, honey, you don't have a point. Like, mm. and so I helped him rewrite it. So it was more to the point and clear. I'm a clarity coach. So, but if you don't know, you're not being clear. If you don't know, you, you can't ask for something. You can't book someone. You can't ask that question. Well, Dawn's giving you the permission yeah. with the script to do it. And when you all of a sudden become empowered because you're seeing how the scripts work, then all of a sudden your confidence now grows and you learn the power behind scripts and being specific. Yes. Yeah. And when I say scripts, it's not word for word. Right. You don't have says, to say exactly how I say it, yeah. but it's kind of it, but it's that guide. It's the guide yeah. that we need where I'm, you know, where I am saying something as simple as tell me a little bit about your wedding. Well, you don't have to use those actual words. You might, you might say something different, but you know, it still means the same thing. But exactly. the, but the idea is is that then you take them and, and you adapt them to suit you and, and, and the way you speak. And obviously, you know, exactly. we all speak differently, different right. dialects. You might say it in different ways. We write things down different to how we even say them out loud. So I'm completely aware of that. But the idea is, is that you take them through the system, take them through this script to get them into becoming a booking with you so that you know in your heart of hearts, you've targeted the right brides. She's going to pay the price that you deserve to be paid. She's not going to haggle you. She's not going to ask you to price match anyone else. And she's going to sit in your chair and she knows and, and she's confident that you have already had a discussion with her and you're feeling good about it. And she's feeling good about it. So that when she does get to the chair, it doesn't matter how high her emotions are, you know, and how stressed she is, she's confident in you because you've already you've already laid that foundation before she's even walked into the room with you yeah. so i think i think that's the key to to both of us having you know the experience of if you break things down step by step by step and i know that as creatives we tend to be big picture people that's what i think we right. are we're big picture people and we don't tend to, whilst we're very good at detailing what we do, I think the business side of things, we're perhaps not as detailed as we feel like we should be. We're like, oh, but I'm not very technically savvy or, you know, oh, I'm not really good at social media or I'm not really good at this. The thing is, is that I think everyone has the capability and the ability to be good at these things. They just don't know how to get started. And that's right. why people like us build systems so that it helps them get started so that they can feel confident. And just like we were talking about there about growing the Facebook group, you know, it, this all ties together into how you are going to create and get more bookings. It's because you are putting yourselves out there into places where other hair and makeup artists are not doing it. Um, you've built your confidence up, your following systems that, that you know are predictable, that they're going to work each and every time. Um, and your understanding as well, which is something, I guess, some hair and makeup artists probably do, but without knowing it, it's also understanding where the bride is at in their, in their wedding procedure. One of the things I teach as well is about knowing where your bride is when she first comes into contact with you. Not every bride is going to come into contact with you and make a booking. It can take a little bit of time for them to, to what I call funnel them through, funnel them down. You know, you're going to have lots of brides come into contact with you on social media not every one of them is going to become a booking. You have to understand that. And it's, and it's helping them. All these things that we're talking about is helping bringing them through to actually becoming the booking. Right, right. Well, thank you so much, Gretchen. I know that it's late for you. So thank you so much for being here. Um, Gretchen is going to be teaching the second C of her program, Construction. She's going to be doing a practical demonstration on the four-day live event coming up. If you guys go to becomeabridemagnet.com, you can find all the details there. Um, so yay, I'm so excited. Thank you so That'd much be for fine. being here. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much for being here, Gretchen. I really appreciate your time. Um, I love speaking to you about this stuff. Um, we could talk for hours.
I know, I know. We sometimes do. Off I know, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> All right. Well, take care of yourself. And um, thank you so much for being here. And um, I will talk to you really soon. All right. Take care. Thank you so much, Dawn. Right. I really appreciate you. Thanks, Gretchen. Bye.